Hello Grade 4 and welcome to your Natural Science lesson for today. If it is your first time joining us, my name is Mrs Niverson and I have the pleasure of working with you today. Um, I hope you all had a lovely restful weekend and if you uh, celebrate Easter, you had a chocky filled one. Luckily, chocolate um, still counts as a necessity during lockdown. Now I thought I'd start our lesson today just recapping the things that we covered before the long weekend and those three concepts were the states of matter and their properties, those being solids, liquids and gases. The second lesson we did was the changing of states through things like evaporation and condensation, heating, boiling and freezing. And finally, um, we looked at the water cycle and how water moves around changing state in our world. Now, if you've watched our previous lessons, I did pose a couple of scientific questions to you. And let's just recap and see if you're still awake. I asked you, although we know that solids, a property of solids, is that they uh, keep and maintain their shape no matter what con container they are in. I asked you if you could think or name a solid that does not necessarily behave in that way. A solid that appears to behave like a liquid in that it fills and takes the shape of the container that you pour it into. Now many of you got this so well done. It is any solid such as sugar or sand or salt or in my case, I have here to demonstrate with you today, some rice in this container. I have some grains of rice. Sorry, hold up in favor camera there. And here is another little container here. And if I carefully, without getting it all over my computer, pour the rice into this container. Oh, and I'm spilling some. You'll see it takes the shape of the container it's been poured in. That's because each and every individual grain of rice is its own unique solid, but when they are together, they behave like a liquid. So well done if you got that right. And today I thought I'd show you something a little bit uh, different to that as well. In this container here, if I hold up to the camera, you may be just able to see it moving around. I have a liquid. This liquid is a mixture of water, and maizena, which looks like this. To your parents or your mum may use it if she is doing some cooking and she wants to thicken something like a gravy. It's corn flour. Okay, now in here I have got some water and corn flour. And this is an example of something we call a non Newtonian liquid. Now, Newton was a very famous scientist. Um, he was the gentleman that came up with the theory of gravity from sitting under a tree and an apple landing on his head. But he also dis um, discovered liquids such as this. Now, a non-Newtonian liquid, um, now you know um, from our lessons that a liquid changes into a solid through cooling. Now that doesn't need, necessarily need to be freezing. Remember, water freezes at zero degrees into ice. But certain liquids such as chocolate, they solidify at room temperature. But this particular liquid doesn't need to be cooled in order to solidify. It's non-Newtonian because if you apply a force to it, it becomes a solid. So I don't think it's going to be very clear in my camera, but I've got a video clip to show you now. I'm going to grab a little bit. Oh, it's tough the liquid in my hand and if I turn it you'll see it dribbles out like a liquid but when I hold it in my hand and you just have to take my word for it here it is a solid ball of gunk and goo. Now you can do this at home um, but I would highly suggest you check with your parents first and when you're finished with it, whatever you do, do not pour it down the sink because it will clog up your parents' drain pipes. OK, so a, sol a liquid, excuse me, that behaves like a solid when under pressure or in a, a force is acted upon it. So in here, I'll show you, I've got a ball of it, but then the second I let go, it turns 
back into a liquid. Now that I've got that off of my hands, um, let me minimise myself into the corner. Um, before we look any further and I play that video to you um, so you can see that non-Newtonian liquid clearer, I just would like to remind you of Worksheet Cloud's email address that is grade4 at worksheetcloud.com and you can send me in any questions or even answers if you like um, there to the, uh, to the questions I pose you during the course of the lesson. So now on your screens I have a little video clip of what happens with a cornstarch and liquid solution when hit by a hammer. Can you see that? You'd expect it to splash up because it's a liquid but where the hammer hits actually is solidifying but if I push the hammer in slowly it turns back to a liquid that's because there's less force being applied. So now let's quickly recap on the changes of state that we learned last week. So on the screen in front of you, if I pull it up slightly so I'm not blocking it, you have we've got um, a kettle with some steam or water vapor coming out a glass of water and some ice and I would like you to tell me if you know what is occurring to get from the water to the steam and from the water to the ice. I've kind of given you a clue based on the color of the arrows. That's right, the word we use is boil and remember water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and freeze to get to ice and it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Here, remember we said to get water to ice, it must be a cooling process. The freezing is a cooling process. Then get to ice to water, we melt it, which is a heating process. Here, just to remind you that this doesn't only apply to water, although we did use it when thinking about water when we looked at the water cycle last week, we also apply to other things. Um, seeing as Easter has just occurred, I thought we'd use chocolate as this example. The solid gets heated to a liquid chocolate and it cools again to solidify into a solid. Here I have metal and metal ore comes out of the earth. It's dug out of the earth by miners and we heat it in order to get a liquid metal and that needs to be heated a lot hotter than 100 degrees Celsius. That's why whoever is doing it here is wearing gloves and being exceptionally careful not to touch what he has heated. And then in order to get it um, into the mold, it's poured as a liquid and the mold then cools into a solid to form the spearhead. Now remember, States of matter change doesn't, necess uh, sorry, doesn't necessarily apply only to things turning from solids to liquids to gases. Could just be as simple as cracking an egg open so you have the liquid egg, frying it up and heating it to get a solid fried egg. Or even as simple as making toast in the morning for that egg to go on top of. I take bread, I heat it, and I get toast. And some changes of state also occur when things are added. So here I have some milk. I heat the milk with some chemicals and I, well, not even some chemicals. Sometimes it's just as simple as a little bit of vinegar, like an acid, and I will get out some cheese. And that gives you an idea of the thing that we are going to look at today. Now, Let's see if you have been clued on. So I've just shown you lots of different reactions and lots of different changes of states. And some are here shown on the grid in front of you. Now what I want you to do is look down each column and each row and see if you can spot the odd one out in each. Now hit pause. Look carefully at them and see if you can do that. Now we're not going to go through the answers just yet. I'm going to show you our learning objectives for today and then see if you can have a look again and spot the odd ones out. 
So what are our learning objectives for today's lesson? By the end of this lesson, you will be able to understand the difference between a chemical and a physical reaction and give examples of each. You will make observations about chemical reactions and name three things that indicate a chemical reaction has happened. So, as always, we have some vocabulary to add to our scientific dictionaries and to make this lesson possible. So, a physical reaction. A physical reaction is a reaction that is reversible. Now, you may not know, or you may know what reversible means. If you think about a car and you think about someone putting it in reverse, it means to go backwards. Well, that's exactly the same in this instance. A reversible change is something that you can change back. So, thinking back to the slides I just shown you, something like water changing to ice and then melting back into water. It's reversible, so therefore a physical change has occurred. A chemical reaction is the opposite. And if something is reversible means it can go back, then a chemical reaction is irreversible. And that means that it cannot change back to its original form. So here, think about, for example, um, mixing um, a cake batter and baking it in the oven. I'm never going to be able to get the eggs, the flour, the sugar, the milk back and separated from the original batter. And when we talk about chemical reactions, we use two very important words. We talk about a reactant, and a reactant is the item being changed in a chemical reaction, or a product. And a product is what is made at the end of a chemical reaction. You, you might use the word product in maths. Um, when we talk about a multiplication, we often say, what is the product of this sum? Um, so for example, a chemical reaction that is irreversible, Let's take the example of turning bread into toast. The reactant would be the bread and the end product once I've heated it is the toast. So if we come back now to our odd one out stage and we have a little look at the um, diagram, let's see if you can spot which one on this um, column, sorry, not row, columns go down, which one is the odd one out? Is it the paper burning, the ice lollies melting, or the firework exploding? That's right, it's the ice cream melting or ice lollies. Ice lollies melt, but if I refreeze them, they will uh, go back into a solid form. Now, they may not resume the exact same shape, but they have not changed in their properties. They are still exactly the same. Whereas if I burn paper, I'm going to get ash and smoke and soot, but I will never get paper back. Here in the middle column, I have some salt being added to water. I've got a uh, orange that has gone nice and moldy. And I've got a picture of a lady doing some cupcake baking. Again, here you're looking for the odd one out, which is the water and salt mixture. The other two are irreversible changes. They will never go back. There has been a chemical reaction. But here is a physical change, a reversible change, because I could evaporate the water off and be left with the salt at the bottom of the cup. And then if I condensed the water vapour that I had evaporated, I have separated them again. Here, an egg being fried, a nail that has gone rusty, and a rain cloud precipitating. Remember that word from the water cycle? The odd one out again is the only one of them that is a physical change. A reversible change is the cloud raining because precipitation then forms part of the water cycle and goes round and round again. It goes backwards. However, I will never get the rusty nail to just be brand new again, and I will never be able to get the egg back to liquid. So now, very quickly, going across in my rows here, the mixture here is the physical change. These two are chemical. 
Here, the ice lollies is the physical change. These two are chemical. And here, it's the cloud that is a physical change. And these two are chemical. Now, what I'm going to do um, now uh, is get, uh, show you three examples of chemical reactions. And what you can do at home is take a piece of paper and I want you to write down what you see and what you uh, feel or smell or I know it's very hard. You won't be able to smell over the computer screen. But when I um, make these reactions occur um, and then we will uh, compare and have a look if from those we can come up with a list of things so you can spot when a change has been irreversibly made, a chemical reaction has occurred. So the first one I have is light a match. The second is a mixture of vinegar and bicarbonate of soda. And the third is a headache tablet and water. Now, if you want to do these at home, please do. But I would highly, highly recommend. In fact, I would insist on you speaking and working with your parents or an adult, responsible adult at home to do this. So first one, some matches. OK, definitely don't ever play with fire, my loves. But here we go. I'm going to strike this match. And I want you to watch and observe what occurs. So obviously I've got fire and it's burning its way down the match and the match has gone out. And there we go. It's burnt. OK, so what can we write that we observed from that? Well, I would write something along the lines of the match changed colour because it did. It went black at the where, where the fire had been and it got hot and the smoke was given off. Now in this jug here, I've got a little bit of white vinegar and here I have a container of bicarbonate of soda. So if I take the bicarbonate of soda and I pop it into the jug, I want you to watch what happens. You may even be able to hear that. All right. So what occurred apart from it being quite smelly in this room now, it throffed up and fizzed. It's even slightly changed color from the clear vinegar that I had at the start. Let me just put this down and we can move on to the water and headache tablet. So here I've got a glass of water and here it's got to be the dissolvable headache tablets, not normal panados. Here I have a headache tablet and I drop it in. And you can see what's occurring. It is fizzing and there are lots and lots of bubbles popping up. And again, the water is changing color as the tablet is dissolving. So I've said it fizzed and bubbled. Now, knowing that all three of those are examples of chemical reactions, remember chemical reactions are irreversible changes, we can come up with a little list of things, a checklist of sorts to figure out if a reaction is reversible or irreversible. So let's see if you can answer the following questions for me. If there is a chemical reaction, one of the following things will happen. It will change what? The will change. It fizzes, meaning a is given off. Or there might be a change in. So what words? Can complete those sentences. Well, let's go back and have a think. It will change. That's right, colour. So if I go back again to my vinegar and bicarb mix, it's still quite clear, but it is definitely changed colour. The temperature will change. That's the second one, temperature. And that would be a perfect example with the matches. So the temperature changed as the match burnt down. It fizzes, meaning a 
gas, that's right, is given off. So if I go back to my water and headache tablet solution, you may just be able to see still some bubbles popping up there. That are, those are bubbles of gas. And lastly, there might be a different smell. If I think about the matches and when I struck them, I could smell the, the burning. I actually quite like the smell of matches. It, it reminds me of birthdays and birthday cakes. Or with the vinegar and bicarb, you got a very strong smell that came up when they were fizzing because the gas was giving off. So those are things that you can use to recognize if an irreversible change, remember those are chemical reactions, have occurred. And so what homework or activity have I got for you today? So posted on the Worksheet Cloud website, I've put this sheet identifying changes. I have got two columns, reversible and irreversible. On the second page, you'll notice I've given you lots of different changes, some physical, therefore reversible, and some irreversible chemical changes and you need to cut and stick them or you could just write them into the correct column. Then at the bottom I've got two little short sentence answers for the reversible changes. Explain how the change can be reversed and for irreversible changes identify the reactant, sometimes there'll be two, and the product, sometimes there'll be more than one. So best of luck doing that little activity and I have also saved the memo for you so you can mark it yourselves. We'll recap reversible and irreversible changes at the start of tomorrow's lesson. So thanks once again for joining me grade fours. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Don't forget to also complete the maths and English activities and lessons that are up on worksheet worksheetcloud.com's website for you. Have a fabulous day further.